start the meeting 604. Um, welcome everybody to the Wheatley School Committee meeting. I don't know. That's good. Okay, so first thing order is to approve the minutes. So from moved last on, meeting. So moved on October 5th. There's a all in favor? So, the next thing is the financial statements. So I sent you your financial statements um, in the email and um, to give you a chance to review. And you have five warrants tonight, totaling $49,396.77. And there are also 10 payroll warrants for each of you to sign, so we don't have to come looking for you every two weeks for payroll. All the, All the bottom there. Yeah. Yes. And unless anyone has any questions, that's all I have for the financial report. Um, the only question I have is the idea of maybe creating a summary report. So what you're thinking about with that. We have been trying to get the computer to do it, and it does not like the format. We cannot get it in columnar, column, I can't say that word, in column format by fund. Uh, so we're still playing with it, but we are trying, what we're trying to avoid is um, doing separate reports. We've just spent five years getting all the school's chart mm -hmm. accounts the same, getting the reporting the same, okay. um, and it would be difficult to add me to key punch a, a, a report. Right. I have to take that report and key punch it into the format that you're looking for. So okay. I am trying to get the computer, and I'm having some minor success, but I'm not quite there yet. Well, if there's a format that you could suggest that's close, that works with your chart of accounts or works with the structure you already have in place, I'm happy to look at that. The idea is to create, rather than have, you know, sort of 10 pages each time with all the detail, to have more summary lines that we can look at and monitor that would give us a kind of a quicker view of um, the financial you talk, you talk situation. About like overages and stuff like that? Yeah, or so it may be like an all salaries line or an all expenses line or all. And I'm having a difficult time getting the computer to do that. And so the only thing I would have to do, I'd have to create it, then print this out, and then key punch it manually, which then leads to error. You can have key punch errors. Uh -huh. um, and we just don't have the staff to, to do that type of manual labor. How about historical data? Are you able to look back historically at things? Because one of the reasons I'm asking is when we're going to talk later about the meeting with the finance committees, that they are really looking for us to provide um, more insight and, and information to them about the value of the schools. And it's, it's hard for them to also interpret this quickly, even though they can go through it themselves. But so to try and tell a story maybe over the course of years. We, we do the budget a little, like, a little differently mm -hmm. um, because I don't always give you that summation. Right. But again, that's, uh, that's a lot. Of, that's why budget season is very tedious because mm -hmm. it's just me key punching for all those budget lines for all five <coughs> schools. Mm -hmm. um, so we, I do do a report in the budget format that shows you exactly what you're looking for. But again, that's because it's all in Excel, and I'd have to I'd have to key punch this every month to, uh -huh. to get that to do that. Okay. But I do have um, I do have another thing for this evening. I, I did forget. Um, we have the end of the year report. Um, I have one copy oh, here, okay. um, and Katie, you need to sign the, the certification statement so I can sign that. Okay. Um, so I usually it's a big report, so I usually only print one copy, and you guys can share it. But if someone mm -hmm. wants their own, I'd be happy to email it to you. But it's huge. Okay. This is the report going to the Yes. Uh -huh. It was submitted for October 31st. Is that when it's due? It's due September, but they don't give us the file, so everyone gets an extension until <laughs> <so> 1031. <laughs> and today is November 6th? Yes. Yeah, something like that. Okay. Um, any other budget questions or... Any budget challenges that we should know? No, I don't think so. Yeah. It's early in the year. Perspective. When I get those every month, I go through them and I highlight those areas that are looking like we've spent, you know, some significant money for this time mm -hmm. of year. And some of them are naturally so, like the beginning of the year, we really spend a lot out of our general textbooks line item, which is a misnomer. We don't really buy textbooks anymore, but we buy resources. Mm -hmm. and, um, and out of our general supplies line item. So that money tends to go early in the year and then we work a little ways through it for the rest of the year. But in general, I think we're in good shape. 
Um, Patty does keep track of line items that do run over. So mm -hmm. if we're looking at, so even supply line items, for example, if um, if it's if it's over or, or done, if we've used it all at this point in the year, that's nothing to really be too alarmed about because usually everybody buys their supplies up front on, too. Right. Or if it's art or music, you know, we have an understanding that if I'll spend all your money now if you want, but that's mm -hmm. it. That's what you've got, kind of thing. Yeah, so no, I don't have any concerns right now. I, I know at Frontier, with more employees there, sometimes a line item, that person fits into a certain line item, but that person gets a different job. So that line item may be over or under because that person got a new job there. So Patty's does a lot of shuffling right. and stuff with that particular person or persons mm -hmm. yeah. that, happen, right. that happens a lot. One I mean, of our biggest challenges um, is that we don't use a purchase order system. And it is something I've been asking to get implemented. And um, upon Dr. Carey's arrival, she gave me some resources to allow me to get that going. So we are hoping that we will be up and running with purchase orders being encumbered by January. Mm -hmm. um, the person that we um, hired to um, help us got uh, fell ill. So we were hoping for September, and now we're shooting for January. We, it's a, it's going to be a big training uh, for our staff uh, here at, at each of the at, at the five schools. Mm -hmm. uh, but it will give us more data because uh, one of the one of the challenges is that. Uh, I would I would probably have more time to do this report that you're asking for, Katie. But I have to manually encumber the payrolls for the four elementaries. So that's that's me key punching every month all four payrolls biweekly into a spreadsheet so I can forecast what we're going to need to the end of the year. And that's because of the way that we're situated that they're unions because mm -hmm. we we compute the gross payroll and send it to the towns and the towns actually process the payroll mm -hmm. so we don't have anything except for gross payroll and because at, at frontier we do use the payroll it's an auto encumber system we put the salary in for the year it'll say you paid them a thousand you still owe them 49 and it holds that money yeah. i have to do that manually for the all four schools for every employee for every month or every month yeah. That's where your numbers in the encumbrance column come from. Mm -hmm. That's me manually encumbering those, those every month. Every month. Uh -huh. So, it, and that's not going to change until we change from a union, right? But I guess part of what I'm trying to get out of is not get into all those details and just kind of look overall at salaries and mm -hmm. say because they do balance out in the end. So, in some ways, the, all the line items being exactly right is less important to me. It's important to you as the accountant and as the person keeping track of all the numbers. But at the end of the day, I'd rather just see sort of overall salaries and see how we're trending against mm -hmm. what the budget is or against what the last year is, if that makes sense. Mm -hmm. So that's sort of what I'm trying to get at because I understand there's a lot of work. I'm not trying to create any more work. I'm just no, trying to I kind of pull the that. meaning out of the data rather right. than focus on sort of where everything's going because that's not really our thing to get into. So if you have ideas of other ways to present it, that would be great. Okay. I'm not trying to mandate one way. I'm just trying. No, to I understand. One of the one that. of the things that I'm hoping for this budget season is to actually have more of a narrative, a narrative with kind of illustrations with to break it down easier for the finance committees, the select committees, mm -hmm. and the um, certainly the school that committee. Would be to to really um, really see what you know what the differences are and what it is we've done over the past year and what we wish you know, we can continue to do and just to make it just a little bit more clear yeah that's kind of the goal I think is just make it easier to digest yeah and one thing just to clarify is that benefits are not in here. Right. That's correct. So that's the other piece of the puzzle that is important. Is that but the they're on the end of the year report. So every once so they're in, in this report. Yes. Okay. I, what I do, there are two sections of that report. One, it, well, there's multiple sections, but one section is the, um, the school committee budget. Mm -hmm. And then there's a, the, what the cities and towns have paid for, for on behalf of the school department, right. such as the benefits, um, uh, both uh, health, dental, life, um, and uh, if they paid also any tuitions to Smith Folk, that gets added on. Okay. So it, it is a complete town of weight. So this really report. gets us everything. True. Yes. yes. Okay. Okay. Uh, next thing would be public comment. 
Can we public comment? No? Okay. We have public, that's nice. <laughs> um, unfinished business. So we touched on it a little bit, the update of the Town of Waitley Finance Committee meeting held now in September. All three of us attended. Um, that was a meeting called by the Finance Committee to talk about the school budget. The earliest meeting ever for them. They usually don't meet until, what do they say, December? December, maybe? yes. So December. they're very, getting very organized this year and yeah. they're very interested in, again, learning more about um, the school being the biggest part of the town budget. They are trying to really understand better the levers in the budget and also the the increases that we've been getting over the years, they've been, they really want to understand kind of what is that being used for, how, why is that needed, and try and ask questions earlier because they feel like it's kind of being brought at the last minute and they'd rather have more time to digest and understand everything. So, seems reasonable. It's, they're sort of encouraging us to get more involved in helping them understand things better, which is our role, so mm -hmm. that's good. Um, and you know, budget season is going to be upon us <laughs> soon, so mm -hmm. I, that's partly why I want a summary. I just think having a summary would be really helpful. And I think the budget last year there was more of a summary, and that was helpful. Yeah, they had so, yeah, also said they would like to see a summary too. So the right. summary is the first page that we go through, and it tells you exactly which line items are changing and by how much. Right. So I don't know how much more detailed that could get. They don't want detail necessarily. I think they just want to understand the value, the sort of the investment. If the investment is being made, what is the what is it? What is the outcome for the town? Like why are we adding more money to the school, and what is the value there? It's not necessarily about money. It's about interpreting how the money is helping the school and helping the town. So I think we all have to help with that, really. That's not just a financial thing. I think the other thing they ask for is more updates, more regular updates as to how things are going. So that's what I'm really looking for this summary for, mm -hmm. because well, that maybe would we could do it on a quarterly them. basis. Yeah. Instead of monthly, maybe quarterly, um, we could do Would be that. more meaningful and maybe more possible. I mean, they can also get the, our monthly report. I know they would like to see more of a summary, but if they want to see black and white, they this, can is, this, is, this, see is, bla this yeah. is black and I guess white for them. I can add them to the email list. I could add Brian Domina to the email list when I send out the report. You could, yeah. I'd also like to try and interpret it a little for them, so I don't want them necessarily, no, no offense to the fine scheme, I'm sure that, I mean, they're welcome to look at it, but it would be nice for us to be sort of directing how we should, how to interpret this, because we really should be interpreting it first before they are, I think. Yeah, I mean, so, absolutely. So that, so that to me is what I'd like yeah. to present to them. When we talk, um, I'm not sure how much changes each each month. Right, so I agree with you. Month path, is not necessarily. Right, the path that we the chose in the spring, but definitely I like the idea of maybe quarterly mm -hmm. updates. Yeah. Um, what it what has changed, you know, um, because again, like so many things, the information is there. Did we have to hire someone? Did someone move in, or did a new something happen where we needed to hire someone new? So that's already changing the landscape. Did something happen? You know, did the furnace break? Something like that. These things do happen, right. and we have to respond to them. And so I, I would think quarterly is good, but I. Um, I would really like at the at budget time to just really explain where every penny goes. Not every penny, but 30% of the budget pays mm -hmm. for this, 60% pays for the of the school budget, right? And why it has to go up this year, or why it, you know what we're trying to do to bring costs down, and that sort of thing. Right, and then really show that over the years. Like I think that's the other piece is to tie the his, the kind of three to five year view because that's where you really see the trends. It's mm -hmm. one year snapshot is hard to make too much meaning. Of. We can go back, you know, we can go back probably And tied to years. enrollment, sorry. Yeah, we can go back as many years, I mean, to a point we can go back, and this is our increase in 2016, 2015, Correct. 2014. But we can probably go back a ways and show mm -hmm. what the increase is for the school budget. And if we had, we still probably have that summary sheet that we all have in front of our our book type of thing that shows what the increase is. I mean, the majority is on the top. That's salaries. Salary. That's salaries it's and, all about people. Salaries, and, ben and, salaries and benefits and everything else down below is 
like 8% of the and, and we're cutting and trying to keep this as small as possible. As one finance committee person said at at that meet that nice meeting that we had, well, maybe we should spend less money on the kids and more money on the maintenance of the buildings. Now, isn't a school a place to teach our kids? Granted, we have maintenance, but he expects to take money away from the kids to take care of the building when there's a big thing, big things that we have to do. And I'm I'm a firm believer in teaching the kids. I mean. The, we want to teach our kids the right way, and we mm -hmm. do. Now, if we start taking away from the kids for big things at a school, little things we could take care of because that's in our budget. But when we get to crucial things like sprinkler systems, you know, there's other avenues for that. Which well, that's we'll get the to. other piece is to make sure we're on top of the other avenues exactly. the, so that the operating mm -hmm. budget can stay as robust as possible. I think we try to bring, if I'm understanding the sort of the narrative behind mm -hmm. the numbers that you're that you're talking about, I think we try to bring that narrative to you folks here at this meeting. You know, mm -hmm. so if we have a program change, if we add a staff member, I'm thinking more of the proactive stuff rather than the reactive stuff, like the boiler broke right. down. Now we got to spend some money, but but if we make a conscious decision to add a staff member or or make some changes on staffing or to buy a new program or to bring in a trainer, you know, for mm -hmm. for the district and thus for the school, you know. That what what's behind that? Is mm -hmm. that kind of what they're looking to? Yeah, learn? I think so. So so those are the kinds of things that we usually bring here to this committee at, you know, when we have a presenter like Louise or like we have tonight or the things that I try to bring you, but certainly we can try to bridge that gap so mm -hmm. that so that they have a better sense of where their mm -hmm. money goes. Yeah, yeah and, and my sense is if we like. can do it in a more organized way that where they're kind of getting the information and they can easily digest it each quarter or even each budget cycle. I guess the bu I'm just that thinking that a budget sheet isn't going to tell that story. No. They need to see the things that we bring to you, you know, the... Yeah, the we need to summarize are, them in a way yeah, that... Yeah, we need to somehow can, get them information. I'm yeah. not sure the best way to do it, but I appreciate that. I know that when... And we've had them here Paul, our meeting yeah, it's very similar to what he was saying right. when he was here. Right. It's unfortunate that we um, we we had another school committee meeting that night, so we weren't able to be with oh, the yeah. finance committee. And uh, I, I think it, it would have been great if we had been able to be there as well. I think the ladies did a great job that night. So <laughs> we did go. our best. <laughs> but you know, the one thing I don't want want them to. Do, which happened the other night again, and I'm just going to emphasize it, that they just don't take every single line on it and, and critique every little thing that we have on here. That's they, what I don't want. They, they, exactly. Just, I want to hide they just, they, just, they, they, they just want to go after every, I mean, the other night. Well, it's we easy a, to do that if you have it in front of you. Yeah, I mean, it's... Hey, Katie was there um, on the 24th when we went through the, just the, the very preliminary uh, proposal for the um, a, a possible bond proposal oh, right, for right, Frontier right. and you're right and afterwards I had a, a really good talk with Fred Orlowski and he he said yeah you know going through every single line like that yeah, you, you know. have to do the homework and you have to have the detail but you don't always have to present that to everybody you just need to have it when they ask you for the follow-up and to dial it back five years Katie my first budget season here mm -hmm. they said it was just too high high functioning they <laughs> wanted detail so I've spent five years giving so, so much, much detail, detail and now they, they want to go back to just tell us the bottom mm -hmm. line well that's our job finance. security. That might be our finance <laughs> committee, but Conway may be different or Sunderland well, or that's right. that's, yeah, Everybody's going to want it different, and it's like, how do we make everybody happy? Well, part of it is trust, I think, is we trust now. Like, we know there's all this detail, and we could get to it if we need to. But now we're sort of saying we want to pull back. But maybe at that time they weren't trusting the detail behind it, and so they, needed to, they wanted to get more. I don't know. I can't well, explain. Well, select boards change. And that's true. There's school new people, change. new personalities, different. But approaches. unfortunately, the number of hours in a day don't. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So, well, we can work together, and we'll come up with. I think I've I've got a couple of ideas. Yeah, and I'm yeah. happy to help. Thanks. Put stuff together too, if it's helpful. So I appreciate everybody's willingness, to, and we need to get back to the finance committee at some point. I think to just share kind of maybe an up mid-year update on how things going and so maybe our next meeting we could talk about that a little bit maybe you know, mm -hmm. think about how to pr how to talk about that share something official with the finance committee might be a good idea it, it, it would be great if it didn't cross 
the nights that we have other meetings. Patty and I, of course, we, we have five different Yeah, meetings. I'm not actually trying to think add another meeting to our calendars. I'm thinking more of some sort of report that we could share. But I, 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 what I'm trying to say is I'm, I'm, I think it would be good to be able to meet with them. Okay. With, with all the finance committees. Mm -hmm. um, and, and so when we invite them to come here, it, it helps us only because when they meet, we're meeting right, elsewhere. Right, right, right. I see. What you're but um, well, we can invite them to come. That's yeah. fine. Mm -hmm. Maybe we send a report and invite them to come to the meeting I, if they'd like yeah. to discuss it. And, and again, I'd like to put together a presentation that uh, kind of explains where we are this year and what our hopes and dreams are for next year. But, uh, we'll, uh, that that'll be something to work on. That I can work. On. Okay, sprinkler system. Who would like to give us? <laughs> I have um, a report right from Brian's. Right from Brian's. Okay. Um, so the fire protection engineer visited Waitley Elementary School to evaluate and develop a proposal for additional testing and analysis of how to effectively proceed with the necessary repairs. What they're looking at. What that means is um, the extent of the. Um, corrosion or blockage is not truly known at this point and he was he's coming back with a proposal on how we can test it more e effectively how can we know right now we're just not sure it could be out one of those little tiny branches it could be here there do we really need to replace the whole thing can we try some testing mm -hmm. So they're coming back with that information. The town of Waitley currently has approximately $25,000 in the sprinkler account. We are waiting on a cost proposal based on what it is recommended to remediate the system. So depending on what they come back with, um, it could go as high as 100,000. It could be as little as 10 or 15,000. We're just not sure at this point because the thorough testing and analysis hasn't been done. So and is Brian organizing the yes. testing? Yes. So is the town organizing this? Then? The town okay. is Brian is he's taking the lead on this piece. Yes. The sprinkler system account is is actually in the town okay. with the town. So um, do we have a sense of when he'll know what the extent? He is? was expecting something late last week, but it hasn't come up to bear okay. yet. As soon as as soon as I as soon as he gets that information, I'll certainly email the school committee, and then we'll put it on the uh, agenda to talk about that piece. But uh, we really um, wanted to work hand in hand with the town of Waitley on this. Has anybody been here that you know of checking on any other thing, or are they just waiting? To no, the day the day that we had the meeting, the engineers who were here. So right now he's working with an engineering firm, right. essentially, that does fire suppression systems. And the engineers that were here went upstairs and did a tour around up there and took some pipe with them to, you know, to send it be analyzed. I think they're going to do, um, the word is, um, um, it's a biological thing, really. They're looking to see what's inside the pipes that's creating the corrosion, you know? and they're, and they're going to probably, you know, cut the pipes, cross section the pipes to see how much cor yeah. corrosion and how much the pipes have thinned, and they'll probably be able to tell you the biological composition of what was in there and how it worked to corrode the system and oxygen and all of those funky details that I learned about at this meeting, <laughs> and. Um, uh, but um, having said that, I think the bigger issue is um, whether or not the system as it currently stands can be not just cleared, but, um, you know, because we don't know where, where, where uh, you know, where occlusions might be or blockages or whatever. Mm -hmm. um, cleared, but also uh, then you still have a system that has corrosion in it, even if it's cleared. And um, that was the big issue at our discussion is how do we, how do we get past that? concern. So we'll see. So this is a company that I guess the town will pay to provide us with some answers. Cool. Is the water fountain connected to this? The fact that the water no. fountain's not working? No. no. Is that separate? Yeah, no. entirely separate. Okay. <laughs> okay. So we'll wait and hear what the report is. Right. And uh, we'll get back to Brian and then Brian will notify us. 
Okay. We've just been lucky because we've been meeting with Brian kind of on a regular basis about the blue school and, and mm -hmm. so, oh. yeah, so we just catch Well, it's up. good that he's willing to step in and yeah. help with that. He's very knowledgeable. He's a great guy, great asset to our town. Okay. Um, so we're on to new business. Good. Update on the pre-K program. Yeah, I am. Exciting so, thing. Yes. So happy to be here, and I want to thank you again for your support. Um, we took a great half-day program and made it a fabulous full-day program. Mm -hmm. We have Chrissy Huntley and Nancy Leva in our new addition, Caitlin Santana, uh, Santella, Santana, Santana, Santana <laughs> Music, Santella, <laughs> that's here for, with us, and it's really, really fabulous. We have uh, 14 families, 16 kids, three kids on a waiting list. Um, I have all kinds of stats to give you, but this is a program in the district that takes in more money than any other program that we've had ever since I've been here. Um, the project projected financials is 80,000 that we're bringing in as compared to last year that was just about 20,000. The nice thing is that the reviews from people are really over the moon. We did a self-assessment last week and the, the scores are very, very high. The interest is strong from our town, na our neighboring district towns, but we have kids from Cummington, Montague, all over the place that come here that really love the idea of five full days with an extended care option, and, and Caitlin's our extended um, day coordinator. So it's really fabulous. It is really, really fabulous. Rhonda said I got three calls last week about Waitley Preschool for next year, and, 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 and that's kind of unheard of at this time of year. We start advertising in January. When I came last year, I asked for a, a little bit of money to advertise. We put $300 in newspaper ads and a, a couple of things, very minimal, and we filled up very quickly. Um, I don't think we need that type of advertising campaign anymore because of these great people that work here and the momentum that's happening here. We had to buy a few little cots too, and that was all it was to start this up and to keep it going. Um, Patty was so gracious to make a nice little handout for you to, to think about the financials. So I'll pass that around. And um, last time that I was here, I gave you that longitudinal look back five years ago. Uh, last year we had 10 kids in the half day program, the year before 12, the year before 12, so we never could really get it up and running as a full program. But now that we're full day, five days a week with that extended day, we're really, um, it's, it's very, very appealing to everyone that lives here. Um, the other thing that we're really excited about is kind of this um, collaboration with our other preschools to do parent initiatives. We have one coming up November 15th on anxiety, helping parents manage that day-to-day -day worry that kids have. So that will be um, hosted in Sunderland, but it's open for the district-wide preschoolers. We have a pig coming in for an early literacy event in May. There's a Why did you to me when you said <laughs> <laughs> Because I want to see you okay. that pig. Yes. <laughs> Farmer Meyer. Farmer Meyer. Yeah, and his, his, he brings a pig and a pug. And the, the children <laughs> pledge that they will read. And it's, it's a very wonderful thing. We did it last year um, in Sunderland and Deerfield. So I can't wait. I know. I go to that. I, yeah. I happened to kiss that pig last year. So it's Pete's turn to kiss that pig this year. Um, but yeah, some real exciting things. Chrissy is uh, setting up a financial kind of meeting with families to talk about that, you know, start saving for college when the kids enter preschool. Um, a big love of ours is, is the early literacy piece, so we're really, really promoting that very well. We're so lucky to have the support of you all to think about that extended day. Families work, you know, and that three o'clock pickup can be challenging. We have four kids in that extended day program now, but the phone calls that are coming in for next year are really building towards that. And that's, that's nice for us to know. Um, I don't know if you have any questions about the handout uh, that, that we had. We had a bit, uh, beginning balance that's up there in that top uh, right-hand corner there, and that's the projected revenue underneath, which is the biggest number that I've ever seen as an early childhood coordinator. Our next biggest program with 18 children in Deerfield, our full day UPK program, was the highest they ever brought in was 77. So this is, this is kind of mm -hmm. nice to see. 
Um, and that's our budget set up. So at the end of the year, we're going to have an ending balance that really, is that about triples, that beginning balance, which is, is a very healthy thing for us to think about. And I know we were talking to proceed conservatively with, with this. You know, we wanted to see what was happening. We wanted to monitor it closely. And we're seeing a lot of positive signs around the sustainability and the value for the community in having this. I have ton. I have news. I have tons of things I can share with you, and I'm happy to answer any questions. Did you get yes, yes. Yeah. Yeah. I, pr I printed some of them. They're they're, fa they're just fabulous. Too, by the way. Yeah, I looked at all that. Yeah. I, I didn't. I didn't. I saw the email. So I just finally got into my phone tonight for those emails. Do you have a list on where the kids have come from? I heard Covington. I, I heard Montague. I, yeah, I'll give you. I got the breakdown right now here. Um, and I can leave one of these to you. So we have nine kids from Waitley, three from Deerfield, one from Cummington, two from Montague, one from Amherst. We have three kids on a waiting list, two from Sunderland, and one in process from Waitley that we're hoping, we're, we're hoping to move along there to, to have that child join us this year. Um, pretty cool. And are the other schools experiencing similar? Trends? We are full. We are. Oh, we, we, yeah, the, the preschool programs, because of who you all are here, are such high quality. I just had my audit with the state rep today, um, Flo, and she really says that we are an example to lead the state in what we do with our preschools. She was very, very impressed with the way that we integrate children with needs with our typicals, but we are there for everyone and we build this sense of community and we get right down on each individual's learning edge and really try to promote, promote that sense of self-confidence, that sense of community, the social emotional well-being of children. We're really, the, it's, it's really the staff, the professional development that Pete and Louise and myself bring in, this kind of how we nurture our teachers so that they can do the good work with the children. It's just this really nice setup that we have here that's, that's impressive. Yes. Okay. May, I, may I just ask who was it that said that? Um, Flow House, yeah. Low yeah. House. Yeah, House. Yep, yep. She she comes in from the state <coughs> each year to, to audit what we're doing, and I it was a two and a half hour meeting. You you, you know you, you show and you talk, and it's it's just things that we do well is partner with families with uh, bridging kids from early intervention services into our school and setting up programming and transition for them. We also, the family engagement that we're, we're proud of and it keeps expanding, um, the curriculum, the diversity, how we really can set up a differentiated program. We have three, four, and five-year-olds all in one classroom and we're doing it, you know, kind of thing. Bravo, <laughs> bravo. And uh, yeah, it feels, it feels really, really positive in a very good way. Is she a, um, is she a Desi or EC? Yeah. She, yep, she's EEC. Yep, she, yep. She's our big wig at EEC. Yeah. You guys are always welcome to come visit preschool anytime. Yeah. Oh, they're precious. Yeah. They are, and they're so, they're just so well behaved. They're just so engaged in everything. Even if it's sitting down at right time, they're, it, it includes everyone, and they're just all yeah. ready to go. We have a lot of eager learners. Yeah. A lot of eager learners. It's really nice. Mm -hmm. Uh, Caitlin, Chrissy, and Nancy are big science people and the inquiry base and that growth mindset and really that mindfulness of know yourself as a learner. We're not hesitant to talk about that with a three-year-old. Get to know yourself and the tools that you need to get the job done, whether it be to be able to climb that structure over there or zip up your code or build a block tower. All of that kind of stuff is we really try to tune into that so I again I thank you for all the support I'm thrilled with the way it's going and I'm hoping that you'll support us again for next year Sounds like it's going better than you thought well or you know it's funny it was like I was having a baby and I was swinging it out a little bit <laughs> what we only have 10 signed up what you know really it was like this whole like I know people are gonna really like it but it's just building it in the first year and having it come but by September we were full and Chrissy is the kind of teacher that says, what's one more?
more. Mm -hmm. You know, depending on the special education needs that we have, we can go up a few more children. We are really into the high quality piece, and we like to keep a five to one ch children to a adult ratio. So it's it's something that really um, makes a difference for the education and the day to day functioning of the classroom. So. Have you noticed a difference in the school? Absolutely, yeah. yeah. It's just, it's, yeah, it's been a lot of fun. Okay. Yeah. I like to spend some time there. Seems like they're always having snack. <laughs> so I, know snack. I, just know what time, I just know what time snack is. It's awesome. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Yeah, the older grades have even really taken to the preschoolers. Yeah. Out, outside, we have shared recess, and you know, sixth graders are teaching them kickball and teaching them how to hula hoop and, you know, so there's even peer-to-peer -peer models. It's just incredible to see. That's right. So. Yeah. Thank you for the update. I miss my kids being in there. <laughs> I had fun, too. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Monitoring sounds like this next year could be tough. You'll have too many people. Oh, it will be a, likely be a waiting list, which makes me sad. And I bought some other real estate, and <laughs> this is me. You know, <laughs> what else can I we build, and how can we bring them and capture them all and get them on a really positive trajectory for um, academic excellence? Really. So, is there, there's nothing else you need at this point. No, except to really, yeah, communicate how well it is and mm -hmm. to let you know that that bottom line there is giving you a buffer. That's it's something that you all can think about in terms of uh, how it will benefit Waitley and uh, if things will get switched around, if and when kind of thing. Thanks. Okay, thank you so much. Thank you. My pleasure. <laughs> I just had a simple question. You know like the buffer zone, the extra money there, where, where does that go? Does it stay for early childhood? Mm -hmm. So it's restricted. So yes, it's so it's an account right now. Okay, good. In the early I didn't know if they've ever got big. Now, what we've done in the past, depending on the, like right now we budget um, all of, of a piece of the, the of the early childhood teacher and all of the, um, this year we added the extra, the extended day could care coordinator and the entire salary there. So I mean what we can think about next year is possibly being able to in the increase um, the allocation to, of the teacher. I wouldn't want to do it in one fell swoop, but we were doing 17,000, maybe we might want to look at 20, 21,000 at mm -hmm. budget time and reduce our budget by a little bit and then put more over here. I mean, you might be able to move pieces over Yeah. Because I was just looking at teacher paid 17,000 and a coordinated hand prices. No, and I had, to, I, had to, I had to think about that. I, had to, I thought about it for like 15 seconds. Oh, okay, yeah, I was getting. Now the other parts remember. in the budget. Yeah, I know. Yeah. And you know that seventeen thousand was really what the tuitions could afford at a half day, four day program when we only had ten kids coming then. So it was yeah. really what we brought in, that was what we could um, help offset the set that salary obligation. So this is proving the concept a little bit in the sense of being able to support yeah. more, which the last time I guess it wasn't able to do, didn't do that, but yeah, That's great you know, that you're so quick to be able to prove that concept. And the idea of um, even even if we have um, mixed family dynamics where grandparents are doing more, we, we are offering this till 3 o'clock and it is the feedback is so positive about an educational experience a full school day and that includes a nap time but transition a lot of practice on how I regulate my body but but so even a stay-at-home grandma let's say that would normally be doing the day the, the child care for the child is seeing the benefits of coming to school and being a part of this community and that was an unknown that I wasn't sure you know each town is so different but that's there and it is certainly gone very far for um, working families the family from Cummington works just in Hatfield and were panicked they didn't know what to do with their child and they heard about this and fell in love with this and 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 here we go so we're lucky to be able to do that you're welcome and my pleasure So do you want to talk about the subcommittee for the
Superintendent well, Goals, or? Do you want to talk about capital improvement? Oh, yes, I'm sorry. I have oh, my old version. Please update. Yes, so I had asked that we try and stay on top of our capital projects in the same way that we try and stay on top of our operating budget. So, so you can see um, there's a list. I handed out a list earlier uh, about the projects in the last year or two that, that have included these items. A replacement of garage roof, garage door replacement, preventative maintenance on the metal roofing system on this building, carpet upgrades to vinyl tile, we're done this summer, code work requested by the building inspection, uh, sprinkler system repairs, fireproofs the stage curtains, uh, emergency lighting repairs, installation of an energy management system, replacement of the boiler three-way valve serving the HVAC system, lighting and energy upgrades, and replacement of a leaky section of gas main. So what we have on the bottom is update phone system repair, clocks and intercom, and they're already funded through town warrant and they're currently being planned. We had sent out something earlier that was not up to date and thank goodness Pete came today and asked us to update it. So I have handed out a new one, not the one that went out in the mail. The new one I gave tonight is less than a year. You can see the projects that are needing to be done versus mm -hmm. the ones that have already been done. So the phone system, the clock upgrade, and the intercom upgrade. That's right. Yes, yeah, that's right. Yeah. Those are being done, they're being planned as we speak. I'm hoping that they'll be done right after the new year. The reason it's taking so long uh, that we didn't do it this summer and we haven't done it as of yet is because currently, we just had another meeting on Friday. We've met twice already. Um, Scott Paul, Bob Lesko, and myself, we've met twice on the, the, the thing that's holding us back is the connectivity of the phone system connecting with the intercom system because in the end, they'll all be connected. So we can't just go out and grab any phone system and then get an intercom system and expect it all to just mesh together. So right now they're working, I think Pete, you were in a discussion today, if you wanted to fill them in on that as well, but the, uh, <clears throat> the thing holding us up is the phone system. We're, we have a couple of concerns about going voice over into that protocol. Mm -hmm. So, voice. I can, I can tell you what I know. So, um, I did speak with Scott Paul today, and um, so, so part of the holdup is just that, what, and this actually speaks to what we were talking about earlier with the Finance Committee wanting to know sort of what, what's the story behind the money. Mm -hmm. So, this is a project that, um, that I think in the end is going to be very successful because uh, I know at Central Office, when, when our IT team essentially did your phone system. So this is a project that could cost a whole lot more money, but could probably be done in three weeks if we called an outside provider, but we'd spend a whole lot more money. Um, the IT team is essentially proceeding with a voice over internet protocol system, right? Which, you know, don't ask me about the technicalities of that. I don't know exactly what all that means. But it's taking us away from the old system where our phone lines go through switches that are out in the community, et cetera. One of the things our team has learned is that a lot of the phone companies aren't spending a lot of time or money upgrading their switches, repairing switches, things like that, because they don't see it being worthwhile because a lot of phone telephony is going over the internet more and more. Okay, so there's some rationale as to why the, the district or the team here thought that we would go with voice over internet protocol. I think the reason that we're delayed is just far more practical than that, that it's just an extremely busy team. You've got three guys now that are installing a telephone system, or about to, um, who have a whole lot of other technology you know, needs in a five school district with you know, three, three or four employees, if you, if you include Maureen, who's an educational, um, you know, more of an instructor than a, than a techie, um, you know, doing the work on the computers. So I think there's just been some delays that got us here. But, um, but some of the concerns, well, not really concerns, I, I'm not sure I say their concerns in, in as much as they're going to change the project. But um, when you do a voice over internet protocol kind of thing, you have a server. And I think what the team is trying to figure out right now is, um, do they want to locate a server here, just for our building? Do they want to create one central server that will eventually 
cover all five of our schools. That would be hundreds and hundreds of phones. And so Scott is thinking ahead and wondering, well, what does that mean for my team? Are we all of a sudden going to become a phone team and, and dealing with phone issues all the time? Or do we take that server issue and, and farm that out? So I think they're working through some of that, and that's about the most I can tell you about that, because I wouldn't want to try to answer questions without Scott being here. The real practical question about when is our upgrade going to happen is, um, you know, in the next few weeks, I think we're going to start seeing things going. If you look down on your list, where it says air conditioning, the only other thing in yellow in the first column, that air conditioner is connected to the whole phone and clock <laughs> system. Yeah, because what we're going to do, I think, is move this unit to a different spot. We talked about it going to a different spot in here so that it, there may be, a, I forget exactly what they're doing, but it's connected to this project because at the moment, at least, I think they're bringing a server here. For this new system to get it going yeah and we need a little more ac or we need it relocated so that's gonna those everything in year one column is gonna that's in yellow is is imminent uh scott called me a couple of weeks ago and said that in in about two weeks he said i'll be in touch with you we'll meet and we'll get going um, today i saw him and, and he was thinking you know pretty much the same that in hopefully in the next week or two we'll be able to get busy. They also are obliged to four other schools in the district, some of which are having some needs right now. So I think, I think that's what we're, the waiting game is part of, of the whole deal of trying to do this in a way that's going to work well for us and not cost us a fortune. Mm -hmm. so, so are we doing it, patient. so most of this job, are we doing it in-house mm -hmm. and buying the equipment and having our <clears throat> team do it? Yeah, I mean, there may be some wire running that they'll do. They may bring some, I don't know how much they can spend on bringing in outside. But like the air conditioning unit, they're not going to do that. Right. You know, our, our um, guys who we but use when for we, that normally. But when we, when we first bid this thing, we weren't planning on our team doing this, correct? No, we did it. That's oh, we why did. we did it with that cost factor in mind. Okay. So we, we have $30,000 um, uh, and more yeah. money to take care of it. I don't know if we'll need that much, but... I don't know either, but in any case, if you have any questions about anything on that list, I can try to update you. Or if you think there's anything missing, that's always something we've done in the past, is talk a little bit about... Mm -hmm. What else? Or even where they are on the list, and whether we want to prioritize something a little bit higher for... Because obviously it's not just our decision that goes to the town and then... Capital Improvement Committee decides what they will prioritize each year. So my that's my key thing is I want to clarify what is Capital Improvement Committee monies like? What are we trying to ask for for them, and what if, what do we get, what do we pay for through this budget, if anything? So these are all things that would be asked of the town. Correct. Right yes. Now? If they're on that list, that's, that's a capital improvement. These list. are all capital improvement things. Okay. So I have a question on the list that was already done. Um, the preventative maintenance on the metal roofing system. That's something that's going to be ongoing, right? Yeah, like that, every year you're absolutely right. Inspection that, came up, or that came up with you and Bob today, and that's something that we want to do is before the snow flies is to get the people back who were here last year and do a little walk around on the roof and see if they see anything concerning, you know, loose, loose screws again or anything like that. So that should but that isn't that covered in our budget here? Mm -hmm. Isn't yeah, that, that part of the added to the budget? Yeah. That would be yeah. Yeah, it needs to be right at this point. So what else is covered in our main budget that's not on these kinds of projects? So is it mostly maintenance and updating of? Oh, no, it's a lot of things. I mean, Test, I think all the tests are part of our budget. Testings, inspections, but even, even repairs and things. Like some of this stuff is you know, bigger ticket items, and I think that's why they're on here. Mm -hmm. You know, like my understanding is that you know, um, when we when we do maintenance on the septic system, that just one of those pumps is thousands of dollars. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. And if we were to keep that in the budget, you know, that would be you know, that would be hard to do that out of our out our, of our regular maintenance budget. But certainly, every time well, now we have the sprinkler fund too. But in the past, every time a pinhole leak happened in the sprinkler system, that came out of our budget. And even now, if we have one of the ovens in the kitchen breaks down, if you know um, something goes was wrong anywhere we built refrigerator that fails oh, any, mm -hmm. really anything comes out you know anything that's immediate the that's operating immediate budget has to comes out of the operating budget right. mm -hmm. 
last year's repairs on our ground placement on the oh, I'm sorry. I'm sorry, I was just thinking of that. I'm trying to create the variety, groundskeeping, all of that. But the flooring was done with the budget money last year that we replaced. We took up the uh, uh, we took up the carpet, we put tile down with our budget right. money. That was Ex end of the year. End of your money, right? And we're gonna talk at budget time about how to do another room or two if we can. Because I see it as part of our Yeah, capital. I see the sprinkler heads on here, right. but mm -hmm. if something, you know, we have to figure out what's going on. Smoke detectors. Yeah, right. The sprinkler system is on here because it was on here before. Right. We're, now it's a whole new game. Yep. Yeah. We talked a little bit about smoke detectors today because I, I, these are not the same smoke detectors that were here when I came nine years ago. They've been updated. I'm told that they have dates on them. Um, and I, I, I requested from Bob that before we, you know, proceed with having them all replaced that we use a current contractor, you know, to pay them for a couple of hours of labor and have them come in and just look at them all because they inspect them and clean them so they're all working. Right. Yearly they do that. But I wouldn't mind dating them to find out, you know, how old they are and if there's a, um, um, a time frame in which we're supposed to replace them. Like in your home, after 10 years, you're supposed to replace your, your smoke detector. Right. Mm -hmm. I don't know that there's a similar law or regulation for you know, commercial ones like, because they get inspected every year, you see what I mean? Wow. Mm -hmm. So if they're inspected in working condition, I mean, at some point maybe when they're pretty old, you want to replace them. But I know we have replaced the vast majority in the time I've been here. So the phones and the intercoms were the big thing last mm -hmm. time that we really needed to push, and the town's going to be asking for capital projects coming up. Is there something that we want to be pushing, or do we want to just do, is there anything we really need at this stage, or are we more previewing things that might be coming down the pike? I think we got to wait to see what happens with the sprinkler system. Mm -hmm. That's really the big thing. Mm -hmm. The, uh, and, and really the, the big thing is to get the upgrades to the intercom, the clock system, and the phones. So that's, yeah. that's something that yeah. really right. needs to happen. Well, we, we have the money for that. Yeah, right? that's, right. so that's going to happen, yeah. I think um, Patty's absolutely correct that it really depends on what happens with the sprinkler system and you know what that means to the town, to the mm -hmm. school, but all of those okay. things. But I will say that there are some things that you know can't can't be left alone forever. And you know the biggest one on here for me is probably um, the pavements outside. I, I can tell you, Town Highway um, Director Keith has been talking to me about it for three or four years already wondering when we're going to move to do asphalt work in here. <laughs> but I, and I keep telling him it's on our list, but... Um, what, that he feels like it concerned. needs to be repaved? Yeah, he's concerned that, um, uh -huh. you know, that it's just, it's reached that point where it's starting to crack and uh, it needs to... Yeah, if time. you don't take, if you don't, if you don't take care of the cracks, moisture gets in and then you get expansion and contraction. Mm -hmm. You take care of the cracks when they first develop and keep the moisture out of it, it helps a lot. Because mm -hmm. if you don't, it just, gradually just erodes it and erodes it and erodes it and it starts sinking and stuff so um, I remember Don talking about this yeah. at the end of last year mm -hmm. yeah. so that would be our next big project we want to you know, that's just one man's opinion. But when yeah. we built this and list and prioritized stuff, we did it as a committee and I yeah. prefer to do it that way yeah. I, I think I, I really like the idea that we depends on what goes on with money this year but go forth with more classrooms with the tile easier to keep clean and that's i think that's a really positive maybe not in here but because it's a lot more of a quiet area and stuff but definitely all the classrooms what do you think jen what's your honest opinion um i kind of have mixed opinions okay. because now more than ever we're allowing kids to kind of sit on the floor and do whatever makes them comfortable so um I think though with the area rugs that are down there now, those teachers that do have them, they're managing to make it work so that we're still honoring, you know, sort of the the comfort of the children. Um, but I think we still have to, you know, keep that in mind that we right. we do allow for the kids to work comfortably. So, so the tile doesn't allow them to work comfortably because it's um, old and Yeah. And I mean I know it took a while yeah. for the the area rugs to come in and so the kids were on the floor and after a while it was just are we still going to be sitting here you know it's kind of cold um but i think that's better now um and it, and it was very noisy with without the area rugs so 
But I, I do agree that it is cleaner to have the tile. Yeah. So two things about that. One is that you know when we do move to tiles, we do have to make purchases because kids are not going to sit on the tile floors. Right. And this time, of course, it happened because you know it was end of the school year and we had mm -hmm. some money to spend and it happened very quickly. And by the time we got around to ordering the carpets, it took a while to get here. So, but yes, if we as we make the transition, we're buying either mats or carpets, mm -hmm. you know, okay. area rugs. So is the idea to use up operating funds again to, as we have them for that project? Those rugs tend to be about four hundred dollars a piece. Mm -hmm. Four the to five hundred. The rugs. The rugs. Not the tiling of the floor. No, not the tiling of the floor. I'm sorry. Area rugs. The right. the area rugs. They they have to be um, they have to meet certain requirements mm -hmm. and they have to be stamped on the inside. They have to prove that they you know that the fire retardant and. and you know, Probably versus. easier to keep clean versus definitely more hygienic. Yeah. Yes, I remember the old, the old people taking their rugs outside, hanging off the van, beating the hell out of them, <laughs> get all those dust mites out outside. <laughs> okay, well this is really helpful. So um, we, if we can just keep an eye on this, and, and as we think about what priorities we have, and we're going to need numbers too, I guess at some point. The only other thing that I'll mention is, again, the discussion this committee's had many times, but um, while the emergency generator would benefit the school in, in, a, in a situation where we were out of power and, you know, we were already here and power goes down, we can continue our day, um, it's, um, I'm going to say it's really a town experience. Serves the whole town. Yeah, so right. Wasn't while it's on our person? list, it while it's on in. our list, I think it's really going to be more of a town expense. Not so the, the generator is basically because this is the emergency shelter, so that's why it was a town. So we did, Lynn said we did write a grant, and um, we were able to get an estimate, and the estimate came in three times as much uh, as we originally thought it would be to put the emergency generator in. And there's also a moratorium on adding new gas uh, lines uh, in the area, so it's been on hold. So do we have grant money or no? We use the grant money to have the estimate done. So there's no money sitting anywhere mm -hmm. for this? Well, there might be a little bit, but the, 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 there, there might be some in a fund, but the, the amount in the fund, the estimate came in three times as much as what we had. Nice. Because they didn't think gas or diesel was safe enough versus going with natural gas for the generator. Okay. But. I mean, it's true, it's cleaner. It's a lot cleaner and stuff. I'm not. Hey, it's been my fight to get a generator here. I'm not going to tell you how many years. So I still fight for getting a generator here because I don't want my town people to go to another town if there's an emergency like we had October 31st or October 30th, X amount of years ago. Mm -hmm. I was out without power for seven days. So I'm not sure about anybody else. Six years ago. Yeah, six years was it? So, I mean, if we had a generator here, we could have had the whole town here in some way, capacity, at least of serving food. Charging their phones. Charging <laughs> their phones or, you know, food. Yeah, stay warm. Whatever. You know, stay warm. And what, you know, luckily it melted fast, but, but there was still no power. So, so we would benefit from having one, but it's really a town. Like, I hear what you're saying. It's a town. Something we can keep on working as a community to get a <laughs> generator right. in the school. Okay. Uh, sorry, what's on the new agenda? Discuss the super. And, yeah. So now we're on to the yeah. advisory committee. So Lynn will hand Hi. it over to you. Thank you. I um, would like to um, ask for the school committee to allow a superintendent advisory committee. Uh, that would uh, meet three times um, <coughs> once uh, on, to advise on goal development uh, in March on mid year cycle, a mid cycle, and um, year in progress at the end of the school year. I've asked um, if we can go forward, I've asked Bob if he would represent Waitley. Um, and my goals are all, I've redone my goals and I've got the draft. I'd like to share it with them and explain um, the goals. They're pretty much the same as they were, only they're a lot more involved. What had happened was we, I had done um, last year, this is for you Maureen especially, I had done um, 
I had eight goals and I had done a binder at the end of the year with all the four domains and explaining on each domain, each um, element of the domains, how I was able to meet those domains. And what I found out, is, it was a big binder, but I found out is like a lot of people really didn't read it. And I met with the, uh, they, su they summarized the goals and the, 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 you know, the development of the goals, the uh, reaching the goals and other people's, the school committee's ideas on how well um, my evaluation was. And um, what I got out of that was communication is a very big deal that something really needs to be focused on, which I've been working on since then. And the other piece was um, I need to simplify the information I'm handing out so that, again, when we go to the Finance Committee, it's not a bunch of, so in other words, I overdid it, I gave too much information to go simple. So this year when I made my goals, I went very simple. And then they said, well, and, and as school committee members have a right to do, they said, well, how about you do this and this? So um, upon reflection, um, at, at first I felt, oh wow, I was asked to you know, go a little more simple and then, then I had to go back to the drawing board and, and get a little more complex. So in order to help me with this, I thought um, a superintendent's advisory committee would, be, would, would really help me to understand there's 24 school committee members that's a lot for any superintendent. And it would help me to be able to understand what it is they need and how I can communicate what I'm doing so that they understand the complexities of what it is I'm doing and actually have that trust that the district's in good hands. So that there. Sounds like a good idea. Yeah. I, I, um, it's the same thing that Pete said earlier too. Uh, a committee is some, a committee forming a plan um, that uh, takes the onus off one person and it, to have that support from different members, one from each of my school committees would really be helpful for me. There was a lot on um, goals at the conference, yes. mm -hmm. SMART goals, yeah. and it was tied in like district goals and then we all kind of mm -hmm. work down from there, superintendent's goals, school committee's goals, it was was interesting. My um, coming in last year, my biggest goal, of course, was the entry plan and facilitating that, uh, understanding where we were going and what we needed. And then um, over the summer, the course of last spring and last summer, was to really work with my admin team on the strategic plan for the district, which we actually presented uh, at the uh, last meeting. and. Um, so that's what we're working on. That's a one page, but behind that document, there's many pages of how we're actually, the steps we're going to do. And the principals take that strategic plan and those pieces, bring that to their school committee, their school councils, and they use those same ideas in their own school setting. So they're coming up with their own school improvement goals. So it, it's a very, you know, it's all meshed together and it's all working together. And certainly my goals need to feed into them. The previous ones were very simple. Uh, just straightforward, buy this and that. I will, you know, this will happen as evidenced by. But I was able to, to make it more clear. I've made the objective, the, the actions, the resources, the timeline, the benchmarks, and the artifacts, which um, the same goals, just added a little. You know, a little bit more information. So I don't know if the committee would, I have materials from the conference that mm -hmm. the committee yeah. would want. Yeah, and, and, and down the road, as, as I get even more entrenched in the district, I, I and I, Ketty and I have had this kind of um, conversation, uh, school committee goals. What is, what's the goal that we all want right. to work together for our school? I mean, we, we, we know unspoken, what we hope for, you know, all our students, you know, to be high achieving, to have the best education possible, that our building is well taken care of, that we have high quality teachers in every classroom. And these are the things we work on constantly and they kind of go without saying, but there's no reason why we can't articulate it. 
do we want to have a closer relationship with the finance committee? Do we want a closer relationship with the town select board? How are we going to do that together? And again, that's kind of a all of us together. And being out there on your own, it's very, very difficult to say, yeah, I'll take care of it and I'll do it all. Um, things are so are done so much better in a committee. We're trying to sell the uh, the old uh, the blue, blue school. school. We, we call it the blue school, but the old central office. We have a committee that works on that, and um, we're working on policies, up, updating the school school committee policies. We have a committee that works on that, um, and I would like to work with the committee so that maybe in a smaller group you know, I can really articulate well what it is I'm doing and how I'm taking care of it. And there's a lot of things that happen day to day that I can't bring to you in, in this setting um, simply just because of the nature of the work. But I think in a smaller setting, you know, I can really discuss that. You know, I was just discussing with Bob and Frontier, you know, some issue going on there and uh, how, we, how we continue where we work. Uh, trying to be transparent, I do email the school committee every two weeks. I'm trying to find the exact uh, right way to communicate with them everything I do. I can't say, well, and then I worked on, you know, I worked with the, the lawyer on this piece, and then I had this personnel issue, and then I had this discipline issue with the student. I can't get into all of that. but. Um, I'm, you know, I'm really working hard to be transparent, to say this is really what I'm doing. It's a complex job. There's a lot of districts. There's a lot of things going on. Um, visiting the schools now every, you know, at least every two weeks. I'm in those classrooms. I'm meeting with the principals. And um, there's, there's, there's just a lot involved. It's a very complex job. Everyone works hard. That's the one thing I will tell you. Everyone in this organization works hard from, you know, the custodians, the kitchen workers, the teachers, the IAs, they're all out there working really hard. But the job I do is, is so complex. <laughs> it's just so complex. You've got so many, you know, stakeholders. And um, it's so, uh, I, this is why I'm requesting it. And I'm just hoping that you'll uh, allow are you willing to sure. serve in that capacity? I have plenty of time. Yeah. <laughs> um, yes. I think we need to. Is this something we need to vote on? Yeah, I, I would like it if you agree. If you agree. Yeah. I, I'm fine with that. One comment I'd like to make, though, mm -hmm. is I do think it's important for the, us to have school goals. So it seems to me the goals you're talking about are more the high level district goals. And we're part of that district, but we also have our own. Yeah, school. there should be school. So we should have our own school. Committee that's goals. why I talked. That's why we talked, and that's what I would like to do with Waitley. Um, and that's why I really hesitated um, at the last full school committee meeting because, well, you know, you need to do this. Well, what I'm doing in the regional district is so different than what I'm doing in Waitley. And the needs of Sunderland are so different right. than the needs of Waitley. And it's hard to come up with superintendent goals that's going to cover everything. Well, a suggestion might be just a goal to establish goals at each school. I, Honestly, yeah. like, I some mean, I think. Some people do, like, a, a workshop. They meet in the summer for a day in some mm -hmm. committees, and they come up with these goals. But it, it all starts with the strategic or the district goals, and then we work, we align ourselves with that. Yeah. Um, right. We base like, yours on that. We base ours on that. And what they said at the conference is to make sure that some of the school committee's goals aren't really superintendent goals that were, mm -hmm. you know, they have to be our goals, not goals that we want for her. Um, yeah. So, but it's a lot different when you're talking about somebody that has five schools versus superintendent that has, well, say one school district and stuff. So it's. Yeah. In that case, yeah, you know, we do come up with that because her goals, if it was just Waitley, she was a superintendent, it would be goals of probably just Waitley. They'd be really different. Be a lot different, but, right. you know, Pete well, must have his own personal goals that you come up with every year, too. I, I want to Oh, really his do. goals are great, FYI, yeah. and I, I meant to tell you. 
<laughs> well, you have, I mean, I'm not sure if you ever shared, and you must have shared them with us before, I would have had on this. I don't know, we vote, we always share every year our school improvement goals from, okay. from right. our school Good. council, but I don't think the committee's ever asked me to see my goals. But Can we have a next sure. meeting if you share your goals with us? Sure, I just submitted them to Lynn a short okay. time ago, so once we go over them, okay. we'll make sure they're yeah. Please. Yeah. I guess I, I, loved, I, I loved did it. respond, though, didn't I? I did say they're great, I just haven't figured out how to go on my learning plan. And I, I think you probably didn't because I sent them to you through my learning plan, yeah, so I, you I got, a, you got one of those emails that you can't reply to, I think. It's just, a, yeah. just an information. I printed one. them out. Yeah. Um, he has three great goals and again very much like the superintendent um, I, there's um, district goals or school goals uh, student achievement goals and professional goals mm -hmm. and so um, I think someone had said well you know the student achievement goal it's not what you do it's what the teachers do yeah. the buck stops with me it all starts mm -hmm. with me all the student achievement goals yeah. I mean I have to have those and, and this is what I have to have, and this is what they have to have, my, the administrators, the great administrators. But um, his, his goals are great. Yeah. Well, maybe next meeting, yeah, can, that would be great. can you share with us maybe? Because yeah. for me, it's more about aligning all the goals so that we're all working mm -hmm. in the same direction. And right. I think that's going to be really important, particularly in a district like ours, which is so complicated. And it really is. Unless you have that, you guys are going to be spending your too. Mm -hmm. So. Okay. True. I'll make a motion to approve the recommendation for the superintendent to have an advisory subcommittee. Second. All in favor? Thank you so much. Okay. And you'll probably have my goals as well next month because I'll bring everybody in probably about 5.30, maybe 5.30 meeting or 6 o'clock meeting, Bob, I don't know. Yeah. But they're, they're done. Yeah. And, and okay. Can you talk about that? Which is I will bring him back. Yeah. I'm sorry. I'm not feeling well. Okay. Okay. Feeling need to. Also, to uh, D uh, discussed relocation of the softball field oh. from the new school to uh, our school. What here. is the softball field? Is that the one next to the fire station? Nope. No. No. Uh, the school on the corner. Oh, River the Road school. and yeah. yeah. So, I'll, you want me to? Yeah, please do. So, at our last subcommittee for. Uh, trying to sell the, the blue school, we, we talked about doing RFPs, Wakey being one and us being the other one to try to see if we get anybody interested in seeing the two pieces of land at the same time. Unfortunately, um, Wakey couldn't do it at the same time we are, so we put ours on hold to, so Wakey can discuss selling the piece of land, but we may have some feedback because it's a softball field right now that's next to the blue school, and I recommended that whatever improvements that we're going to do down there, because supposedly there's like $10,000 in CPA money that was going to be doing something at that field that we could do it with our own field right out here. Probably would cost less than $10,000, but we could do it here. We got plenty of parking where I've gone by there on a busy night where it's a little tough with the parking there. They would have to park around the side of the building and stuff, but um, that would be one way if we can if we can get, well, it would have to start with us of our approval to have the softball field out here versus the blue school. And then the town has to bring it about amongst in their special meeting, not probably not special, by a regular town meeting, and discuss that we are trying to sell this piece of property. We got RFPs already out and back already on purchasing it. And the softball field will be regenerated out here at the ball field we have here right now. Mm -hmm. So you have to separate the softball field from the, or you want to combine the softball field? Well, we can't combine building. them the same thing, but whoever would like to buy the, the blue building. school would like to probably have the land that the septic system's on. So the um, cross encumbrances, so the two pat, the two lots together, two lots the two lots together, if we sell with the town of Waitley, if Frontier Regional sells with the town of Waitley, that whole package is much more attractive. Mm -hmm. Otherwise, we would try to sell a piece of property where the right-of-way goes right through and there's a ball field. Mm -hmm. And 
they would try to sell their their lot, but our septic is on the middle of their lot. I see. So we would offer to have the softball field moved here as a way to yes, and then have the CPA the funds thing. transferred from Christian Lane softball field to Waitley Elementary School grounds. Softball for what ages, might I ask? Yep, it's the very young. young. The rec, the two, second grade through. So it's and supposedly, supposedly there was seven thousand dollars earmarked for that field down there. I mean, I know it would cost earmarked from that, that's not in the school budget. No, no, CPA, CPA money. money, community money, community money that we all put away. So, is the town budget. in favor of this change? Do you know? Or? Well, I think for the, I mean, the people who we have talked to, Brian's been there and Fred's been there, mm -hmm. but you. You have, we have to get permission first to have it here and, and it starts with us and then it goes to the townspeople uh -huh. tell them what we're do what we're what we're going to put out a RFP the town's going to put out an RFP and we are January 31st I think there's a timeline and we're going to have results back before town meeting to let them know hey we do have somebody that would like to purchase both parcels one we own as Frontier Regional, and one the town owns there. Um, is that gonna, like when, when would they need, what time of day? It would have to probably be after after school. Yeah. What's that, the ball field? Yeah. Oh yeah, I mean, here, softball's it always, I don't know. Yeah, I mean, it could. I mean, I think, um, I don't know that putting it out here, and, and this is news to me, so forgive okay. me if I'm, but I don't, I don't know that putting it on the current playground would be the, the wisest thing, especially uh, if it's for young kids, because, you know, we're out there till 5.30 every day, year-round. So I'm assuming that the youngest kids try to get their practices in earlier, not later. Um, you know, so if somebody wanted to practice at 4.30, 5 o'clock, we'd still be, you know, after school program, still be out there. Across the way, on the big field, seems like a more ideal spot to me, where there's no existing field, so it would have to be created rather than upgrade the one that's out there. Right. And I don't think little kids hit the ball very far, but it's not a far distance right. from from home plate to mm. the playground. And I was either. So. And that's something I talked to at our meeting yeah. here. I mean, it's as long as it's for, you know, the I don't know. There again, I'm not sure of the when my daughter went it was like first to third grade or second to third second, sec second grade second grade yeah. i think it would yeah, be completely unobtrusive across the way on the bigger field you could pick whatever corner you wanted to based on where the you know yeah. where the sun is the time of year you play softball there's four corners on that big field you could set it field up any way you wanted to it's small it wouldn't interfere with anything we do we can still use it for pe we still use it for field day <coughs> right but and this is starting to get a little crowded out here too you know adding gaga ball courts we're Ooh. adding, it's, never mind, <laughs> it's a game. It's very popular. We just relocated the shed, there's a new, oh, by the way, that's on my report, we haven't gotten to it yet, but I'll wait on that. But, sounds fine to me, but I would, I would consider the field behind the, the circle, you know, the So island. you think $10,000 is probably, yeah, I don't know. I have no idea, yeah. I'm just thinking, you know, I mean, it's, yeah. I, I don't know what, when they're, what the Community Preservation Act folks had in mind with to do with that money, but if it's a matter of putting up a backstop bases and creating a field, you know, I, I have no idea. I don't know built a field, but. It's pretty flat. Yeah, it pretty it's flat. definitely flat. Do they, do they play soccer over there or anything yeah. like that? Well, they a couple of, a co Yeah, PE mostly. And the pre-K slash I think Rec League so brought a couple of small goals once and maybe had a few practices there. back there. <laughs> Yeah. They're not on the field anymore, are they? There were, so, yeah, there were still goals there. over there. On the field? Yeah, of across the island. Today? Um, yeah, I don't know about today, but... The, the I don't think there, there was anything was out there anymore. Mm -hmm. One yeah. was tipped over. So the question really is how much would it be to put a field into over there, and is there, if it requires more money, that's probably problematic. But if it's 10000 I like that idea, too, yeah. right? Yeah, I don't think it would I think more fields is good for the town if they can have another field and it's nice to have it right here at the school. Yeah. In fact, if we could, you know, if it was a shared <laughs> field and we could use it too, right. it, would, it would benefit us. It's well, somebody said, well, don't be a lot of wear and tear, but we're talking, you know, out, you're talking about outsiders probably using it. I, that was one of the things that they talked about. Says, we got one at the bottom of Sugarloaf. I've never gone by other than softball scene and seen softball being going on at the base of Sugarloaf, which is 
which is one of those not professional field, but it was done up right by Colcott right. and, right. and Deerfield Academy helped pay for it, I think. So that, you know, if any other field. So I mean, you know, I think you'll, you'll get local kids who want to come down and play, but that's true on any field in any town, unless mm -hmm. you're going to lock the place up. But we get kids who come and play on the asphalt here and play basketball after hours. Usually, unobtrusively, sometimes they'll make a mess or leave a mess, or somebody will break a bottle or leave behind their plastic right. containers. But you know, you can't. It's hard to police that. Summer nights when you know kids want to go play baseball, they're going to go down that field and play. <laughs> and there must be nowhere early to build this. No, I know they're trying to build another field at Hurley, but they want it to be a baseball field, and there is some difference between softball and so, baseball. Yeah, and so I think well, it's nice to have a dedicated softball field. For them. We also played softball on on the baseball field there, because the mound I think is 45 feet and softball is 40 feet. So you come off the rubber, off the mound a little bit down to the rubber and stuff. When we when we played here before, when my girls played. Yeah. Bob, I wonder so, where they are in this process because I imagine that. Um, as just as a courtesy, it'd be it'd be good to let our community know that this is coming down the pike potentially, and get some feedback for the school committee from, you know, from the folks who work here besides the principal. Right. But I don't. I mean, I don't see any major roadblocks. It's the only thing I could. The only thing I could tell you from for a town perspective that they were as they were talking about, they had to start with us first about relocating mm -hmm. that field from down there. Is it possible to bring it up here? Which sounds like possibly it is and then second and all they would bring in a bunch of the townspeople actually I think they'll talk to the rec committee next and then for the rec committee it'll be on a t not town warrant but a, on the on the at a town meeting in April to vote on to sell the land mm -hmm. we have an RFP we do have a protective buyer and that's that's the next time that'd be the next thing other than the rec committee you know, given their point of view on it and stuff like that, I suppose. And when would you evaluate how much it would cost to do the field? Is that, where does that fit? I, I, I don't even, I don't even know. Uh, it wouldn't cost the district, the school district, anything. That would be the and, goal. Yeah. yeah. Um, so the, what we had is a timeline that the Frontier Regional School Committee agreed to and voted on that we would be accepting um, bids around the holiday season. Then it, when it was time for the town of Waitley to do that, their town of Waitley selectmen said, no, the holiday season's not really great, and we want to push it closer to the town meeting because calling a special town meeting to sell that building isn't fair. Mm -hmm. So they wanted to do it all at the annual town meeting. So the new timeline has us accepting, not accepting, but taking bids right up until the time of the the lately town meeting hmm. so we have a very if we have a valid bid um, a viable bid and uh, when we go to the town meeting we would have the bid we would also have the plan we would also discuss so the town residents would have all that information at once okay plus we would also have to have um, because the first thing will be great, you know, sell it, but what about this softball field? Well, we have a new home for the softball field, mm -hmm. and we have funding to build it. Mm -hmm. um, so whether we build it there or where this one is, I, I don't know. But there is, there are CPA funds specifically for the Christian Lane ball field, and we would, at, we would ask them to vote to to switch that from Christian Lane to the Waitley School, school site. So it sounds like we should give a little more time, though, for feedback potentially. I mean, we have time. And yeah, we don't so have to. We don't have to vote on Pete anything. Wants to bring us it's to not the even. Yeah, for, it's not even out for a vote. For it's right. not out for a vote tonight. We just wanted to inform. Put it out. And there. it sounds like we're open to the idea. Yeah. But there's some a lot of details that still need to be proven. Yeah. Well, um, for us, <laughs> for us, you know, if we just say yes, they can, they can bring the field here, and they can, you know, but not to any cost to the school district or. Yeah. Know, well, uh, yeah. I mean, I guess I just want to be a little mindful that we have a say in where the field goes, and mm -hmm. that it doesn't disrupt yeah. things. That it's an added value, not taken sure. away. From I like to come sometime, Pete, when it's daylight before we have our first snowfall. I'll come. Yeah, yeah. I'll stop by and. 
I have a big tape measure. Maybe we could just do a little, me you know, pre-measuring, yeah. so we'll have some information ahead of time. So when someone asks, "Hey, can you do it?" and Pete and I say, "Yeah, we can," and so just uh, to be clear, what I'll do is I'll let my staff here know by email that the town is considering or, or you know, wondering if they can move that ball field onto our campus somewhere, and just ask for feedback. You know, positive oh, that'd be great. Ideas, whatever. That'd be nice, I think, just yep. as a courtesy. Okay. You know, so. Yeah. Could be a real positive. I'm not sure how many of the townspeople, unless they're watching the, the thing tonight, is have heard for, for the first time, like yourself haven't heard on that, and I apologize. Yeah, I don't think many people no. probably haven't. I mean, the, it was something, the other thing would be a courtesy to the softball organization. Well, the rec they committee. They had their own. So, the, so Brian was going to Brian was going to talk to the rec. That was their next thing was talking to the rec committee, okay. rec committee, about this. But so. softball is is sort of managed by a separate group. The rec committee, I think, owns the field. But there's like a softball, like frontier league or something. I'll talk to the rec oh. committee chair. <laughs> and who's that? John. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, softball is not in Wheatley's rec. No, it's not in Wheatley rec. It's anymore. Frontier rec or something. Oh, no, it's Deerfield. Yeah, Deerfield. she runs it. Deerfield runs oh, it. Oh, yeah, I remember. So you're going to want to make the sure they're all the all mice. Oh, all the so Deerfield, is it Deerfield rec or Deerfield well, softball? It's a commission? It's consolidated softball league is my understanding across oh. all the towns, and it's run out of Deerfield. Yeah. All right. What's her name? Sue Nantel. Sue Nantel. Sue Antonellis. 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 Thank you. Don't ask me how to spell it. Like it's so, okay. Well, we'll but, get. But the rec committee can help you with that piece. But I'm just, yeah. I'm thinking in terms of buy-in, you're going to want to sure. get other people yeah. on board. And uh, you know, again, the whole idea is to get the word out. And and again, you know. Um, yeah, the more people have feedback, hey. Mm -hmm. Okay. So is that everything on our new business? Yes. Yes. Sorry. Yes. Um, I don't have any other report. I think I've already shared. So, collaborative. Do you have? Did they didn't have? No, we're meeting going? next week. Next week. Okay. And give us a quick feedback. Did you Did you like going? Oh, the conference was conference? it worthwhile? The conference in uh, at the Cape. Yeah. Oh yeah, it was great. It was overwhelming, but it was great. It'd be good if I can after maybe having a year of experience, go to another and yeah. see what's I've been to retained. one. I went, I can't tell you how many years ago I went there and I got a 10-year plaque, or actually I was in there longer, but <laughs> they, they recognized me as being 10 years, many years ago and stuff, so. It's time for your 20-year plaque. Yeah. <laughs> I would uh, somewhere there, I would, but. I would recommend going next no, week. No, no, I. I yeah. My problem is it's it falls at the wrong time for me for for time off and stuff. So it's really it's really tough. But I'll do it again when I retire, which is not that far down the road. So yes. Okay, Pete, you want to give us a quick update? Yeah, sure. Before I look at my report, I just want to give you a preview that next month we hope to have Louise Law join us and talk to you about MCAS and how things went for us this okay. past year, as well as changes in the MCAS. You know how they're doing things too. Seems like a moving target, and that's, I think we want to make sure we keep you updated. Okay. Um, so mine is annotated for, for the sake of brevity. If you want to just take a quick look at it for a minute, and I'll skim over it, and then we can see if you have any questions. I did want to follow up. I gave you lots of building updates at one of our last meetings, so I just wanted to give you a quick update that the shed is pretty much built out there. It looks like there's a little door issue that's getting worked on, but otherwise it's up and built and it's on a pad. And um, and we put the uh, sandbox back together. I think I told you we we're going to have to make it just a little bit smaller. Uh, and I do want to, you know, thank the town of Waitley Highway Department. They gave us a lot of help with brought in their equipment. And, um, and I think they're also going to bring us some sand now to refill the sandbox because nice. we took away all that sand, which, you know, it had been years and years of just piling it on. But when we realized that there were broken pieces, uh, that had to be pretty much pulled out of the ground, mm -hmm. you know, long, long spikes that hold that down, very well built. But a couple of the pieces got broken, I think, by the plow in the winter. So we removed two pieces of what was a six-sided sandbox. Now it's four-sided, a little bit smaller, but it still looks great. And, uh, and the shed is up, too. Um, keeping you updated on safety drills. As you know, we start the year with the bus evacuation drill. That happened. I already reported that to you. We've had one lockdown drill. We have three more scheduled dates, and one of them is going to be a reunification training. And drill on that date, you know, we're just getting started. Reunification is the is sort of the 
the drill that all of us are learning about as we go along. And I think I mentioned to you before, but I'll say it again, that reunification involves the possibility that we have to evacuate the building, go to another place, and then get all the kids back into the hands of their parents. Mm -hmm. And the only right way to do that with law enforcement is to set up a staging area, kids are in a safe place, staff bring your kids out to you. you know, wherever we might be, what, you know, if we leave here and we have to go to Frontier, parents will be instructed to come, come to a table, show ID, somebody runs, gets your kid, gives them to you, just so we know every kid's accounted for, been picked up by the appropriate person, things like that. Uh, evacuations and reunifications often happen in, in, the, uh, in the event of something went wrong, right? Maybe it's something minor like, um, you know, a uh, train derailment or something like that, and maybe there's some toxicity in the air or something, or it could be something a whole lot worse. But in any case, that's a drill that we haven't, um, we've only been trained on, and we're going to get a refresher training and then start working on the drill. But we also have run two fire alarm drills, and I think we, I wanted to mention that to you because with the state of our sprinkler system sort of, you know, us not knowing, one of the things we agreed upon was that we needed to, to make sure that our um, evacuation part uh, is is working and uh, so did it go all right? It went great. We actually uh, J.P. Kennedy, our fire educator, was here and uh, when we got outside, he told the kids that we had cut our time by 30 seconds from the first fire drill to the wow. second. That's a lot. <laughs> That's right? good. So the first fire drill of the year took about two minutes. This one was about one and a half or something like that. But so it was good. Yeah, we evacuated well. Uh, we Are evacuated the children the involved in the reunification drill, or is that? So, so when we do that drill, I don't really know, but we need we need real adults. We need parents when we run that drill. To, you know, uh -huh. we'll do it on a small scale, but they actually want a couple of parents to come and say, "I'm picking up my kid and role play it." And we'll have staff set up, and we'll probably will have some kids maybe helping uh -huh. us out. I'm not okay. really sure. Okay. I'm just curious. Andrew Kanata, state trooper, is the guy who is uh, the local trainer for this primarily. Mm -hmm. And, um, and he's an excellent trainer. We had him here once before, but I don't know all the answers to those questions. Katie, it's just good to set expectations with, yeah. with families sometimes if their kids are going to be involved in something right, like right. that. And I, and I don't know how we roll that all out to folks yet, but mm -hmm. I do want people to know about it. And then lastly, I just wanted to give you an update. We, um, we had openings on our school council this year, and I was pleased that we got two nominees. Um, we didn't get three. If we had gotten three, we would have had to do a PTO election. <laughs> Uh, but we got two nominees, so they both have joined the council because there was no need for an election because we had two open seats. And those are the names of the folks who are on the council now. Your parent members, your community members, and then your faculty members. And the next time we meet is next week on Wednesday, and we'll be putting together our school improvement plan, which, yes, indeed, is aligned with the, uh, with the district goals. And we'll be. And we may have our own, um, you know, weightly oriented goals, but everything that we put on there is um, we keep alignment in mind. That's what I got for you. I have a question. Yes. Is there still a climate committee? Yeah, it hasn't met um, in, in quite some time, since probably the end of last year, was it somewhere maybe middle or end of last year. I remember because we had a new parent, a new pre-K parent join us, and it was just last year. But we haven't called it together, you know, recently. Um, we had done that survey, and were we going to do a follow-up? survey at some point? That's a conversation that we should have. I mean, one of the things about that survey is that it's super comprehensive, if you recall. It gives you a lot of great data. It's also very expensive. And, um, you know, the, the trick is um, you, pay, you get what you pay for. And if we try to get a different product or create our own survey, you may not get the same Depth yeah, you might of, not be able to compare it yeah. to the first one. So if we wanted to do another survey, we would probably want to do the same survey again and see what kind of results we get and then pursue some of the answers. But um, that's a good point. Maybe I will call that committee together because it, it was a committee that we said would be a standing committee rather than you know a temporary committee. So maybe now is the time to... They were talking that. about that a lot at um, the conference I went to, like the social, emotional, and mm -hmm. climate. Maybe think about that. All right, sounds good. Try to reconvene that committee. Thank you. Okay, anything else? Well, uh, let's move we'll to the superintendent. Thank you, Pete. Thank you. Um, I would like to report on the Hampshire County Insurance Trust proposed changes. Mm -hmm. The Hampshire County Insurance Trust will be presenting their proposal for insurance increases. I believe there are, there are increases uh, to co-pays, 
to employees covered by their insurance. The, these, uh, they will be present. Joe Shea will be present at the Waitley Town Select Committee meeting on Wednesday, November 8th. That's this Wednesday at 6 p.m. Yeah. Anyone with questions about the proposed? Any questions about the proposed changes? Anyone who has it, they're invited to attend and speak directly with Joe Shea of the HCIT. And um, this is the town is working with the, the different um, unions of the, you know, the town government works with the different unions about changing the co-pays. And this, I believe, will be coming up shortly in December. Yeah, just um, to add to that, I, I've been digging into it with the town. Mm -hmm. So it sounds like the trust is changing their plan, which will result in some increase, potentially some increases. And the town is looking at different options. So we may actually move away from the trust altogether, depending what other options are available to the town. So. Hopefully, the select board will. Right. One of the discussions we did to. have, though, um, is I believe that they've asked the trust to produce some data that shows that they're still the best game in town because mm -hmm. they are very, um, very competitive. They're very, they're very good, and very thorough. Do um, other towns have that from the schools? The all other schools. Of, all of our all towns. the schools have that. All of our towns and uh, the regional does too. Mm -hmm. So um, as many districts do too. So all the school employees are impacted by this change. Mm -hmm. The difference being with, with the towns, um, with the elementary schools, the union schools, the towns are working with the, um, with the union 38 schools, the towns are working with the union. Their employees. Their employees, mm -hmm. as opposed to the regional, we'll be working directly with the union leaders on the, the regional union leaders on this, this co-pay. Um, and, and there's a variety of reasons why they had to, uh, to up their charges and how their, their co-pays and how they're going to mitigate the losses. And, it's, no matter where you work, it's it's going up. I mean, it's it's not pretty. I mean, I I believe that this is needed, but I do believe that I think we could have been presented presented a little bit more clearly, a little yeah. more articulately, a little more inclusively. So Joe Shea will be there, and he'll be able to help people understand a little bit better. Yeah, and maybe we can be thinking, because there's ways to mitigate these things longer term, so maybe the district could be thinking about how to, how to help think about the benefits going forward. I, benefits go up and down like this, so perhaps there's some financial ways we could not pass on increases right away, or if they're saving some year, we keep the savings to offset the increases. I mean, I, there's just creative ways companies deal with this. Yeah that we might want to be thinking about. This This year, it seems like it's kind of the, out of the box already, and there's only so much we're going to be able to do, but maybe in future years. Yeah, well, and that would be I something don't know for, that the much about, for the towns to think about, but to the extent that all the schools are in this together, maybe the schools can help. Many districts are in it. Yeah. Many, many you know, school districts Not just are in it. Frontier. I would imagine all the town administrators are, are have been talking to each other oh, yeah. mm -hmm. about this big time, so it's... Mm -hmm. We had uh, the town administrators, uh, we had Joe Shea at our meeting as well. I meet mm -hmm. with the town administrators. Um, okay. We had him there too. And, um, it, it still is a, a very viable um, program compared to what else is out there. Right. And people who leave the trust um, try to get back in. Have a little more shock. Yeah. Probably. Yeah. yeah. And then they, they, they leave and then they try to get back in and it doesn't, it doesn't work. But that speaks to better communication too. Like I think this has not been communicated, no. from what I can tell, no. particularly effectively. And that wasn't us. That the onus wasn't on on you know Frontier Regional and or Union Thirty Eight mm -hmm. Central Office. That that was this was there. They the trust. told us how to do it right from the start last June, and you know we've just been following it. So mm -hmm. it's yeah, it, it's tough. It's tough news for everyone. Um, so, Superintendent's Report, the mm -hmm. Massachusetts Association of School Committees and the Massachusetts, Massachusetts Association of School Superintendents had their annual conference. 
I uh, unfortunately I felt badly I had a health concern I needed to be nearby for some for blood work on a daily basis I wasn't able to attend and having said that I will be going in for surgery a week from Wednesday mm -hmm. and I hope that I won't be out for three days maybe three four days maybe. everything goes well yes thanks um, school committee attendees were, and there's the list of those uh, who signed up to go, and Maureen was there from Waitley. Thank you for going. And some of the workshops were social emotional learning, uh, building and managing relationships and negotiations, which will be a big thing next year, um, special education transportation costs. That's something that we, you know, at the central office, we look at a lot. Measures of students' learning and growth, a college and career readiness, the MIAA challenges and successes, 21st century leadership, meeting goals and how as school people, um, as a school, you know, collaboration between committees and administration and superintendent, how we work together. Uh, again, thank you, uh, Pete. All students in grades three to eight took the computerized test last spring. We chose this option as we will, we will be held harmless for our scores this year and we as the schools are making the transition to state mandated uh, computerized testing um, louise law will be here in december to share our results with us we're pretty interested in that uh, i attended a meeting with the massachusetts association of regional schools last week where the results of the study called Supporting Student and Community Success, Updating the Structure and Finance of Massachusetts Regional School Districts. Uh, it was reported by the State Auditor, Suzanne Bump, and I gave you a handout of the findings, and I think you'll, um, the, the findings were pretty much non-binding. The state should develop, the state should fund, um, rural school districts should conduct, the legislature uh, should empower, the legislature should streamline, the commonwealth should consider, the Mass MSBA should provide, and the legislature should consider again. So it wasn't really binding. Um, they found things that we've been talking about a long time, for instance, the regional uh, transportation fund that hasn't been fully funded these kinds of things. And I only brought it to your attention um, so that you're aware of what's going on in our regional high school, our regional junior high, junior senior high, and um, just, just as a note of interest. We're pleased to announce that our new director of food services is Mary DeLusa. She's previously worked at DES as the cafeteria manager, as an assistant manager at Whole Foods, and at American International College. She is transitioning to her new position this week. What was her last job? Um, DES, cafeteria okay. manager. Okay. thanks. And well. she's going to be working, I sent out the notice, but it's only, it's 210 days. And I did- How many schools? In. Five, all five. Conway, Conway too? In? Yes, they did, oh. they did. Um, yeah. And, um, wow, shocked. Well, Sorry, it's, Conway. It's really, it's really for the best. Yeah, and, absolutely. Uh, right. I think we'll be able to um, streamline some things. Oh my God! So you'll backfill her position at your program? Yes. Um, one of the things we're talking about is making. Um, we have cafeteria managers now, but making um, a lead, kind mm -hmm. of a lead in each school, and then kind of revamping um, how we'll kind of stipend or differentiate that position and so before we move ahead of you know with or filling that particular job mm -hmm. um, we want to stabilize all the schools and we, we really just want to be all on the same page so when does she start she's transitioning this week and is um, is it four yes yeah, she'll be done she hopefully will be done at the end of this week and who does Mary report to again? Who's her she, boss? Yeah, they would probably probably be Patty. Um, the thing is, is for financials, definitely uh, Patty. But there's, um, you know, we don't have a lot of background in the food service. So the idea of having Flory was to be able to give us all the information we need to be able to monitor that position well. 
but that definitely comes under the business services. And she'll have to work with each principal. Oh, definitely. Yeah. But she and she'll, you know, then people have to answer to her. Mm -hmm. They'll have they'll have reports on. I'm not saying reports. Uh, evaluations evaluations where they never had yeah. before. They'll have probably as they have a new hire. Though there's your job description. Right. You know, which they never had before. So we're hoping to really um, standardize what it is we do. Um, so, including the meals, I guess. I mean, the meals if you can buy for five schools, you know, that's going to be that's going to be a big plus and a big savings. Yeah, I would, I would say. So we Thanks. have we have some exciting things going. Yeah. On. Okay. Executive session minutes. I don't have the Do we have to go in executive session? Mm -hmm. What okay. time is it? Seven forty-nine. Right. Go into it. I'm just trying to see what it says. Motion. 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 Okay, yeah. so we're back make a motion. Session. I'll make a motion to adjourn for the night at yeah. seven fifty four. <laughs> All in favor. Aye. Aye. Thank, Thank you, you so much. Thank if you. it was gonna be a longer time I would just said Finish. pack up and stuff, but it was it's almost short and sweet. <laughs> I, you've got one of those.